Hello there fellow heisters, Non Superior here. Today I'm going to show you how to navigate the interface in Payday 2. In other words, how to get started. So we're going to start off by playing it safe. We're going to go into the safe house. What's the safe house? The safe house is like a single player kind of practice area. Fortunately it's not multiplayer, you can't go in there with your friends, but you can go in there alone and shoot the place up. So the first thing you'll see here is the kind of a mission planning screen, although it's not really a mission, so whatever. You can click on loadout. You can choose what inventory you get to go into the quote unquote mission with. Let's say uh, I like my Commando 553 and my locomotive with the silencer on it. <laughs> yeah, it's a shotgun with a silencer on it. And I'm going to pick my regular vest, uh, or not, not vest, my TP suit to walk around with. Let's go in and take a look. You may uh, recognize this place in the tutorial. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, mask up. I oh, love that American Eagle mask. So one of the good things about this place is you can come into the shooting range here and take a look at your weapons and see how they perform. See if you like them. See if you want to make some changes. There's an ammo bag down here. can check out all your masks see them on display oh so pretty your weapons lovely lovely your secondaries oh look at the grips gotta love blingy grips you can blow up some light bulbs while you're in here you can take a look at your stash oh mass money Lots of Benjamins. I hate light bulbs. And you can practice interacting with doors and blowing them open. Because <laughs> why, why pick them when you can blow them open, right? Well, let's try to pick this one to see how that goes. Ah, there it goes. And you can practice drilling. You can use key cards. Oh, here's a key card. Now I got a key card. Can I use a key card? Oh, look at that. Door opens. Fantastic. Basically, this lets you interact with most of the objects in the game. It gives you a feel for it. Let's you experiment. Let's you screw around. Here's how the cameras operate. Now, here's the trick with the cameras. If you hold down S, in other words, back up, that'll give you the highest zoom on the camera. And I'm panning this left, lefty, lefty, left. And now I'm panning right, righty, righty, right and that'll let you see things with your camera. You can press mouse one and that'll switch to the next camera. You can press your right mouse and that'll go back. So it's left to go forward and right to go back. Sorry if that was a little disorienting. Oh, look, there is an outside to the safe house. I've never been out there. Hmm, looks pretty ugly. Maybe I don't want to go out there. And if you hit space, you will exit out of the cameras. And that works the same in the missions, of course. Who kicked over the plug? It's a plug going to nowhere. Another one. This place needs to be cleaned. Oh, nice server rack. That's what she said. All right. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's show you what the rest of the interface looks like. Oh, the creepy dead eyes. <laughs> Gotta love that. All right, let's take a look at the mission selection. So you've got crime.net and crime.net offline. Okay, crime.net offline is your single player mode. Crime.net is your multiplayer mode. And let's start by taking a look at the single player offline mode. So what's popping up here are a bunch of missions you can choose from. These are just randomly popping up. Random difficulties, random missions. So if you want to pick a mission and don't want to have to pay for it, you pick one of these. Now there's a time limit on these. You can see the little black circles counting down when that goes all the way to 12 o'clock up there this mission will disappear so you have to kind of know ahead of time kind of what you want to look for and what you want to pick and choose if you don't want to wait for something you're impatient you can go down here to contract broker and you can pay for a mission and then in here you can select any mission you want so let's say i want to play a bane jewelry store mission i can click on that i can choose my difficulty down here the more difficult the mission the more expensive it is, and the bigger the payout, of course. 
Now, the way you pay for emissions uh, is you pay with your offshore money. You don't pay with your normal spending money, which is normally down here, which is a lot lower. The normal spending money you use on things like skills, um, uh, equipping mods, buying primary weapons, secondary weapons, that sort of thing. Offshore money you can use for stuff like this, like buying missions. And you usually have a lot more offshore money. So, for example, I have $156 million in my offshore right now. And this mission will only cost me 152000 on normal mode. Uh, you can decide whether or not to play with Team AI. I'll show you how that works later in the actual mission part. And you can choose the difficulty as I mentioned here. More money, more money. So on overkill, this goes all the way up to over a million bucks. So I'm going to click on decline here and I'm going to show you what these missions are all about. Okay, what's going on here? If we press L, you can see the legend. That gives you an idea. So the risk level is here in yellow. Whether it's a pro job or not is in red. And whether the mission is stealthable is here in blue with the little Pac-Man. Is that Binky or Blinky? Or Clyde? I don't remember. Oh, my God. It's been a long time. All right, so here's like, for example, four stores. Everybody loves four stores, right? So this is very hard mode indicated by the two skulls. If there's no skulls like this go bank, then it's normal mode. One for hard, two for very hard. And it's telling me that I'm gonna get minus 14% experience on this mission. And then there's a little minus indicator there. What does that mean? That means I've played four stores too much because I love it so much. So there's a mechanism in the game that to kind of encourage you to play more than one type of mission. Um, if you start playing the same mission over and over again, you will not get as much experience um, for each uh, subsequent attempt. Um, if you go off and play different missions for a while, that'll kind of reset itself. So for example, here, Jewelry Store is kind of even. I haven't played it in a while. Um, I haven't played it recently, so it's kind of reset. Pro job, Bane, whoops, uh, let me find with a plus on it. It's Transport Underpass. Okay, I really haven't played that in a while. So if I play this one, I'll actually get a 19% bonus experience increase on that one. So it's kind of a mechanism there to, to kind of encourage variety. Uh, you know, people were running rats over and 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 over again uh, because they knew how to beat it really well and it was paying off very well. So in order to kind of discourage that, they implemented the system. So for example, bank heist cash, I get 50% extra bonus if I can finish that sucker. So that's all the basics of this uh, mission picking screen work. And let's take a look at the multiplayer version of it. It's very similar. So if I go into crime net, it's gonna bring up a very similar menu, except that boom, all of a sudden you get all these missions all at once. Well, this these are actual missions started by other people who have picked a mission or bought a mission and open it up for other people to play. If you want to create your own mission, um, you can do the same thing as you did on the offline mode. You can either pick one that pops up and not pay for it, or you can go into the contract broker and do the same thing and pay for it. And one thing to note here is the pro jobs. Pro jobs are different let me pick this pro job. Pro jobs are different than regular jobs in that you cannot reattempt them. What I mean by that is that, well, you can go uh, buy them again, but uh, once you fail the mission, you will start back at the beginning screen. You will not be able to just restart the mission without buying it again. So that's something to be noticed. These are kind of one shot contracts. You have to do it right the first time or you have to start all over again. Pro missions excuse me, pro jobs, also pay a lot more money. Um, they can be a really good way, if you're really good at executing these pro jobs, that can be a really great, great way for you and your crew to make a lot of cash and a lot of XP. So let us let me show you how the filters work. So if you click F for filters, it's also up here in the corner, you can filter out, so let's say you just wanna look at missions that your friends are only running. Oh, okay, none of my friends are playing right now. Let me see what else we got. Uh, you can look at, let's say you want to cut the uh, or increase the, the amount of servers that you're looking at. I want to look at any server anywhere. I want to only play overkill because I'm hardcore like that. And I want to play, let's say, the rats mission. And I can hit apply and boom, this will filter down to just the missions that will match that filter. Isn't that lovely? 
very nice way for you to find the kind of mission that you're looking for right off the bat. So let's say I want to start, let's see, the Shadow Raid mission. So I can come in here and click on it and choose whether I want to enable kick, well, of course, because some people are jerk asses, and uh, whether this is a public or a friends only or a private invite only kind of mission. I'll set this one to private because I don't want people jumping in. You can put a reputation limit on it down here. Um, well, you can't really see it, but my reputation is currently 92. My level is 92. So you can put a limit on it. Let's say I only want super duper high level guys to be able to participate in this mission because it's super hard or I don't care. I'll let anybody in or maybe just, you know, you have to at least have a couple levels. You can decide that here. Allow drop-in will allow people to pop in during the middle of the mission. It's, for example, if you have a full mission, somebody drops out, somebody can drop right back in uh, while you're in the middle of running it. That's really handy. One of the really nice features of this game. And you can decide whether or not to play with Team AI. That is, if there are open slots, the AI will, will take over. And uh, I'm just going to select that and go right in. So here's your planning phase. Oh, God, the dead eyes in this thing are creepy. Uh, here's the planning phase mission. Here you can uh, choose a new contract. Well, what do you wait a minute? I already chose my contract, right? Well, here's a little tip. In fact, I'll do this from the beginning. So here's a little tip. If you want to start a, a multiplayer mission really quickly, just pick any of the ones that pop up. Hit accept. Set it up how you want. Hit accept. And then go into choose contract and you can now at your leisure pick the mission that you want while you're in this screen while you're in this mode your friends can drop in and join them the join your game and you can chat with each other and you know go over voice chat and get everything organized while you as the person who's running the mission can get in here and take your time and pick the mission you want okay let me see i want to do uh oh yeah let's do mall crashers so i'll accept that so now the map is switched over to mall crashers to and not whatever you picked initially. This is a really nice way to kind of get things started, let everybody in your game. You can go into game settings, you can tweak what you just set to begin with. Say they want to play with Team AI, you can kick those out. Whatever you want to do in there. Inventory, this is your inventory. You get to select your inventory. You get to select if you want to uh, take a look at your skills again. Maybe for some reason you want to respect them in the middle of a mission, you can do that right in the middle of the game. You can of course kick people mute them you can invite your friends this will bring up your steam game uh game list and you can invite your friends here uh i don't know what this will do on xbox i haven't played the xbox version sorry and of course you can kick yourself out or you can start the mission now let's take a look at the inventory ah oh, look at the, all the glorious guns okay so here you've got all your equipment on these different tabs let's start with the primary weapons well, you've got your primary weapons that you've purchased, you've got empty slots, and you've got locked slots. So if you want to open up a new slot, it's going to cost you money. Where is it? Here. Uh, 800000 Yeah, each slot's costing 800000 Yep, it's expensive. If you want to buy a new weapon, you can click on here and buy a new weapon. You can choose any of the weapons that you've unlocked. This will give you the basic weapon with no modifications. You can come down here and click buy weapon, but before you do that, let's take a look. Let's look uh, preview weapon. And with preview weapon, you can actually give it a spin, <laughs> literally, and take a look at what the weapon looks like. You can also click on, let's say here, and available mods. Now, this will show you all the modifications that are possible on this weapon, whether or not they've you you have them in your inventory or not. So, for example, these. Uh, suppressors here at the top. I have one of these in my inventory that will fit on this weapon, this uh, AMCAR that I've selected. The ones that are down here in gray, I do not have these in my inventory, but they are available for this weapon. The custom down here uh, that are in yellow uh, are part of the DLC pack. I have some of those available. And the sights and magazines and gadgets and all kinds of stuff. Now, one thing to note is that not all mods are available for all weapons. So if I go back here, I can see all these little indicators. These are mod slot indicators. So for example, this car four has a ton of mod slots. All the ones that are indicated here in white 
are ones that I've equipped a mod in that slot, and the ones here in gray are uh, slots that I have no, nothing equipped in that. So let's see, for example, if I go to this M308 and I go to Modify Weapon, here are the different mod slots available, and I have no or excuse me, no barrel extensions attached to this particular weapon, which is indicated here in this grayed out first slot. So if you want to equip uh, mods on a weapon that you've bought, as I just showed you, you can click Modify Weapon here. Here are all the mods available. Some of these are locked out because I don't have the DLC on them. Some of these are locked out because they have not dropped. If I can find one, here we got this upper receiver. I'm still waiting for this upper receiver to drop on my commando anytime now. But I do have this available uh, because I do own the Armored Transport DLC. And again, you can preview the weapon here, and it's sexy. See, here you can see it with actually the mods equipped on it. And you can also sell the weapon from here. So let's go into the armor tab. The armor tab is a little different. Uh, basically, the armor, armors are just unlocked based on your reputation level. So you start with the two-piece suit, you unlock the ballistic vest, and on and on and on from left to right here. Uh, the last item here is the combined improved combined tactical vest. This requires a enforcer skill, which I do not have. That's why this is locked out, but this is not a DLC item. So basically, the way the armors work are they increase roughly uh, from left to right here in um, armor value and decrease in concealment. So this item that I have equipped here versus this item that I've selected here will show up with the equipped item here on the left and the selected item on the right. I have armor 20 with my two-piece suit. It's an amazing two-piece suit. It's got armor on it. Uh, the selected item is this rather large combined tactical vest that has a 90, but you can see the concealment gets cut in half. My speed is reduced. My dodge is reduced, etc., etc., etc. Heavy armor, light armor. There's one exception here. The ballistic vest and the lightweight ballistic vest. The ballistic vest unlocks before the lightweight ballistic vest, but the lightweight ballistic vest, of course, has less armor and better concealment. All the rest of them go higher and higher and higher in terms of concealment and armor, but these are kind of an exception. So this is actually less armor than this one. Flip them around in your head. Let's go over to the equipment tab. The equipment tab works a little bit differently than the uh, other tabs. These are unlocked solely by skills. These are not uh, drops. So for example, the ECM jammer is a ghost tree skill. Um, these are all from the very first skill in each tree. The doctor bag is from the mastermind skill tree. The ammo bag is from the enforcer skill tree. And the sentry gun and trip mines are both from the tactician skill tree. Now let's take a look at the masks. Boy, you can spend a lot of time in here messing with masks, let me tell you. So, uh, you've got, similar to the primary and secondaries, you've got empty mask slots and locked mask slots. Say that 10 times fast. 800,000 will unlock a mask slot for you. You can select the kind of default mask for your character. Characters can be selected on the character tab here. I'll get into that in a second, but you can select either the, just kind of the default uh, one for your character if you're kind of playing that style, or you can pick any of the masks that you've unlocked or gotten drops for. You can modify the mask. So if I click on, the, click on this Hockey Heat mask, which you get as a community item for joining the Steam community group, which is free, I recommend doing it. Uh, you can click on Preview Mask, and you can see the mask in its plain plastic default glory or you can click on customize mask this is where things get interesting now you've got all your materials that you've unlocked are available for you to choose from same thing goes with patterns same thing goes with colors yes these are all drops uh, each one of them has a different price associated with it how much it's going to cost to apply it to the mask you also have the number in stock of course that will decrease if you use one of these so let me go and show you, let's see, let's choose black, I'll choose material. I can cl click on preview mask here, I can see what's gonna, oh, that's sexy. It looks all oily, doesn't it? The oily hockey mask. 
It's like I play for Edmonton or something. Anyway, so I can click that. I can click on a pattern. Let's choose that pattern. And I can click on a color for the pattern. Let's say something obnoxious like that. And I will preview the mask. So when I buy the mask, that's what it's going to look like. Yeesh. Okay, so <laughs> choose something a little better maybe. <laughs> So if I click on finalize mask, it'll say, okay, you're going to buy this one. It's going to cost you 450,000. Are you sure? Uh, each one of these again has the price. You can see the total cost here. You can pick mix match, get it however you want it and buy it. I'm not going to do that with this mask right now. So I'm going to click on abort. Yes, abort. And I'm going to select one of my pretty masks that I've already got here. You can have multiple masks here. So you can see I've got two of these Alpha Force masks that have dropped. Um, I've got even more masks that have dropped, but I haven't slotted them yet. So if I want to go down to your buy new mask, this is that's a little misleading. I've already unlocked the mask. I'm going to pay money to put it in this slot, right? So I'm going to buy new mask. And now here are all the masks that I've unlocked so far. So these are ones that I've unlocked. These are ones that I haven't unlocked because they haven't dropped yet or I've already gotten it and it's already in my inventory. Uh, everyone wants a kawaii mask. Here's some DLC masks. I've got some of them. I don't have others because I don't have all the DLCs. You get the picture. Infamous, infamous masks are rare drops. Uh, I got one of those, but boy, there's a lot I don't have. There are also some masks that come with the uh, infamy tree, which I'll explain in a moment. So if I want to buy one of these masks, I can click on it. I can click a preview. Eh, kind of orky. Not too bad. I can click on assemble mask and that will put it in my inventory. I'm going to say no for now, but it would put it in my inventory just like this mask is. And then I can go and customize it as I choose. I'm going to go back to my lovely little Chuck the Eagle mask. I love that thing. All right, let's take a look at the character tab really briefly. So this basically is a way to choose what character you play in the game. It doesn't affect your skills or your uh, weapons or anything like that. It's just kind of uh, chooses your uh, your in-game voice that your uh, that your character will speak with and kind of the attitude he has and that sort of thing. So if you want to play as Dallas, you can select Dallas. Play as Wolf, etc. I like Wolf. All right, let's take a look at the infamy feature. Oh, I don't have what it takes yet. What does that mean? Well, to become infamous, you will need to get reputation level of 100. And you can't see necessarily down here. It's a little blurry, but I have reputation level of 92. I'm not there yet. So if I get to reputation level 100 and I pay a fee of 200 million from my offshore account, uh, not as bad as your spending cash, uh, 200 million from your offshore account, you, along with your skill points and the rest of your spending cash, uh, you can be part of the infamy bent, uh, bunch here. So what does that mean? All right, all right, all right. So basically, infamy is starting over intentionally. Uh, so it will reset your skills. You will go down to skill zero. You will lose all your, your spending cash down to zero. You will lose 200 million out of your offshore account and you will start over again. But you will get a cool pair of sunglasses. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> yes. Uh, so you start down this new infamy tree. So let me see if I can do this. OK, so when you start down the infamy tree, you will get some other bonuses. Basically, these are bonuses to make it a little easier to rank back up in the skills all over again. Uh, one of the things that it does increase here, though, that is useful is your drop rate. So your infamous drop rate increases. You're more likely to get infamous items like masks. So if you're really into getting the best uh, uh, masks, if you're a completionist, that's why you go down to the infamy tree. You also get all these cool masks. And every time you hit level 100, you can go back into here and reset again, and you will go up one tier in the infamy tree, and you can select one of these masks to choose from, and one of these skill point increases. And you can reset and reset and reset all the way up. Okay, let me show you how the skill tree works. 
So there are four skill trees in the game, Mastermind, Enforcer, Technician, and Ghost. The Mastermind tree is sort of a support tree. Um, it's also a leadership tree. So you get skills that will help the entire team um, and you can kind of boss people around. Well, you can boss civilians around anyway. Uh, one of the important uh, things you get in this tree is the Inspire skill. You can revive crew members at a distance. You don't have to necessarily walk directly over to them. Very, very useful. Uh, and the basic skill that you use, uh, that you unlock here, is the Doctor Bag, which is used to heal people. The Enforcer tree is kind of uh, the brute, the, the bulldozer. You get a lot of skills in here about doing more damage, throwing stuff around, being a berserker. Everybody loves berserkers. And uh, most importantly, you here you get the portable saw. This gives you the, uh, the over 9,000 saw that you can drag around as a primary weapon and use to open lock boxes and doors and things. The basic skill will unlock the ammo bag. The technician tree is another kind of support uh, tree. At level one, they get to unlock the trip mine. They can also later get these sentry guns that can be deployed throughout the map and shoot at uh, cops automatically. Uh, they also importantly get uh, skills for the drills to make them silent, to make them repair faster, even to make them repair automatically. Very, very useful stuff. The ghost tree is primarily useful for doing stealth missions, for basically lowering your or improving your concealment your interaction speed with bags and basically getting moving around in a concealed fashion quickly, that sort of thing. So let's talk about respecking. So you can put points into your skill tree um, and you can take them out again. You don't actually lose skill points in this game. So you can respect one tree at a time. You don't have to respect all four at the same time. And it will refund you your skill points and half of the money that you've invested in this. So for example, in this ghost tree, since I've walked pretty far up it and spent a lot of money unlocking these uh, skills, I will get about two and a half million back in cash and all my skills from this tree, which I will not do because I cannot afford to do this. <laughs> uh, so the way the skills work in this game are, you know, the first point will unlock this first point of the, tr the tree rather, but as you climb up the ranks, you need more and more points to unlock the next tier of abilities. So for the first tier, it only to cost one point. That's the point you spend here, and you can unlock these three skills. To unlock the second tier, you need five points in a total of all the skills here. So there are basically two levels for each skill. There's a basic level and an ace level. See here, uh, this dead president skill. The basic will cost one point. The ace will cost three points. If I spend the basic and unlock that, I will get 10% more value to loose items. If I unlock the ace by spending three additional points in it, right, so we're four points total, I will get 20% more value. Now, I won't get 20% plus 10%. I just get 20%, so it's not 30%. They don't add together. What you get here in the second tier is what you get. Uh, the tier bonus unlocked here. What this means is once you have unlocked that tier, you will get this bonus. So my chance to dodge is increased by 5% because I've unlocked this first tier. Now let me show you what I mean by that. If I go into the uh, Enforcer tier, I have not unlocked this first tier. I've not put any points into it. So it'll say here, tier bonus locked. If I unlocked it, I would get this bonus. Now. Let me go and explain that even further. In the mastermind tree here, you can see in this fifth tier, I have no points in it, but it still says tier bonus unlocked. So as long as you unlock that tier, you will get the points, or you, excuse me, you will get the bonus for that tier. You don't have to put any points into it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the Payday 2 interface, how to use the uh, inventory and skills, how to jump into a mission, set missions up, create missions yourself, get your buddies to join, run around the safe house like an idiot, shooting guns at walls, and generally having a fun time. I'm None Superior, and until next time, I will see you.